morning, everyone. I am your Monday host, Katherine Farrell, and we're coming to you live from Studio B here at the Hebrew Home, and this is Good Morning Hebrew Home. Today is Monday, March 15th, and the time is 10.30. Uh, we have a great show planned for you today, so let's jump right into it with the weather. Um, abundant sunshine, as you can see if you look out your window. It's really pretty, it's really bright, but the high is only going to be 39 degrees, guys. So really, really, uh, that's very chilly, it's very deceiving. Um, so if you do go outside, maybe just for a couple of minutes, and make sure you bring your coat, your sweaters, your hats, um, and your gloves too. You know, I had a, a dermatologist tell me that if it's ever under 40 degrees, always make sure you wear your gloves, especially if you have any kind of um, psoriasis or eczema, anything like that. Uh, let's move into this day in history. Uh, today is. March 15th, so in 44 BC, maybe this is our oldest today in history, I don't know, we'll have to check and see, um, but Julius Caesar was stabbed to death by Brutus, Cassius, and other several other Roman senators on the Ides of March. So you've probably heard uh, the soothsayer's warning to Julius Caesar in William Shakespeare's play of the same name, Beware of the Ides of March. Uh, not only did Shakespeare's words stick, they branded the phrase and the date, March 15th, with a dark and gloomy connotation. It's likely that many people who use the phrase today don't know its true origin. In fact, just about every pop culture reference to the Ides, save for those appearing in actual history-based movie books, movies, books, or TV, uh, makes it seem like the day itself is cursed. But the Ides of March actually has a non-threatening origin story. Calends, knowns, and Ides were ancient markers used to reference dates in relation to lunar phases. Ides simply referred to the first full moon of a given month, which usually fell between the 13th and the 15th. In fact, the Ides of March once signified New Year, which meant celebrations and rejoicing. So pretty cool facts on the Ides of March. In 1913, the first U.S. presidential press conference uh, was held by Woodrow, Woodrow Wilson. In 1968, Life magazine calls Jimi Hendrix the most spectacular guitarist in the world. And in 1972, The Godfather, based on the book by Mario Puzo, directed by Francis Ford Coppola and starring Marlon Brando and Al Pacino premieres in New York City. Uh, they won Academy Awards for Best Picture in 1973. And then our last Today in History was uh, 2019, so two years ago. Climate change strikes held by school children take place around the world inspired by Swedish teenager Greta Thunberg. So. Uh, lots of fun things in history for today. Oh, and by the way, yesterday was uh, Daylight Savings Time beginning, so um, I hope everybody knows to be watching. It's 10.30, not 9.30, um, and I hope everyone is adjusting well to, their to this new schedule. I can tell you, children do not adjust well to the new schedule. All right, moving on. Our national day for today, um, there's a few of them. So, this is a weird one, but it's National Everything You Think Is Wrong Day. It's National Kansas Day, which I think was very recently. I don't know why these National States Days keep repeating themselves, or maybe they don't, but it feels like they do. National Pears Helene Day. It's National Shoe the World Day. And it's National Napping Day, which is the day after the return of Daylight Savings Day. Um, so enjoy a nap for today, maybe. It's a good day to um, maybe sit by the window, enjoy the streaming in the sunshine, and just take a little snooze. All right, birthdays. Our only resident celebrating a birthday today is Grace G. Happy birthday to you. And we have four nursing staff celebrating birthdays today. Augustina, Gurleen, Anima, and Aishatu, happy birthday to everybody here at the Hebrew home and everywhere else out there in YouTube land or wherever you may be. Um, today's birthday's horoscope. So we're still Pisces, uh, but this one is for Aries. <laughs> uh, for March 15th, Aries could have an infectious, infectious positive energy about them today. 
Even the dullest tasks can be taken on with a positive spin and the people who notice may have to ask what got into you. In love, you can have an extra charge of fiery passion today, making you happily unpredictable to your partner. For the single Aries today looking for love, uh, today's national heightened, heightened positivity can help you attract someone you might like. You never know. All right. Um, let's check out the menus for today onto my favorite topic, which is food. The lunch today is a meatloaf with mushroom gravy, peas, and fresh mashed potatoes. For dessert, it's a black and white cookie. And then for din dinner, the mushroom barley soup with fish croquettes and stewed tomato entree. And then dessert tonight is pound cake. So on to our newest segment, which is sports news. I thought this was pretty cool. It's about the WNBA. So the WNBA unveils new logo basketball uniforms as part of Count It campaign in celebration of the 25th anniversary season. Um, this was a story from ABC News by Michael Volk. The WNBA announced Monday it will introduce a new logo, a new basketball, and new uniforms as part of its Count It campaign in celebration of its 25th anniversary season in 2021. The league released photos of the new logo and ball on Monday, which is today, but said details on the uniforms are still to come. We want to count all the accomplishments of the league from a game perspective, but also in culture and society. WNBA Commissioner Kathy Engelbert told ESPN of the Count It theme. The reason we decided to use tallies in the logo was to get across the idea of keep counting because there's a lot more to come from the WNBA. Hopefully we're going to have a lot of fun, a lot of fan engagement around all of these elements, along with naming our 25 greatest players and 25 greatest moments. And our Social Justice Council has continued to meet to keep doing important work in their communities. Social justice was a, ma was a major focus of the WNBA last season in the bubble in Brandonton, Florida, when the league had a 22-game regular season with traditional playoffs won by Seattle. The WNBA will return to its home markets for this season. Engelbert said that the league hopes to announce its schedule in the next few weeks. Before the pandemic shortened schedule last year, the WNBA planned to have a 36-game season. Quote, it's a bit of a Rubik's Cube, which is why it's taking a little longer than usual, Engelbert said, of working through television and arena availability for the year, this year's schedule. Quote, we're tracking somewhere between 30 and 36 games. It's also challenging because of the Olympic great break, and we want to leave ourselves some room also if we have to reschedule any games because of COVID. Engelbert said whether fans will be allowed at WNBA games this season would be announced at a later date. Much of the testing and social distancing protocol with players, coaches, and officials that the league successfully used to get through last season will remain this season in the individual markets. That presents its own challenges rather than having everyone in the same bubble. Quote, obviously our teams have already been talking to local health authorities, Engelbert, Engelbert said. Hopefully some markets will allow fans, mostly in a reduced way at first. Maybe coming off the Olympic great break, we'll be in a different place as we get a more vaccinated population and less community spread of the virus. So. Pretty cool. I can't wait to see what those uniforms look like, what the ball looks like, and super exciting news for the WNBA. And that's our sport news for today, guys. All right, so the last segment for today I thought was just too cute not to share. Uh, it's uh, a story about penguins. And so it's penguin leaps into tour boat to avoid being eaten by killer whales. And this comes from our Good News Network. A dinghy full of tourists saw the nature film of a lifetime right in front of their eyes. A gentoo penguin that was being chased by a pod of orcas made a desperation leap for safety into their boat. The successful jump happened only after a first attempt had failed when the small animal flung itself head first into the side of the boat and bounced back into the perilous water. 
Travel blogger Matt Karsten and his wife Anna were taking a tour through the icebergs of the Gerlache Strait in Antarctica when they saw the incredible chase unfold. In the video, the life-saving leap happens at two minutes, so the whole video I think is three and a half minutes, and we'll, we'll see it in a moment. Uh, but it ends the long chasing scene. So this is not the first time humans have been at the right place at the right time to help out. An otter in Halibut Cove in a similar trouble uh, was once and swam frantically towards safety as the orca followed. So it reached John Dornella's boat and climbed onto the stern just as the orca closed in. He returned to the deck of the boat three times until the coast was clear. Let's take a look at the video. Sound well. Oh, the payment store. Go, 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 payment. It did. It almost did. I think it got it. Oh, it's still going. such a, a lovely story and um, just so exciting. <laughs> I mean, nature is very exciting. Anyway, guys, that's our show for today. Um, remember to tune into Channel 8 later today, right after this. We have What's the Story with Kate at 11.15, and then Exercise with Deborah at 1.30. Don't forget, you can catch this episode of Good Morning Hebrew Home tonight on Channel 88 or on YouTube. If you're joining us on YouTube, please remember to leave us a comment or hit the like, subscribe buttons, and um, make sure to ring that bell so you get notifications. All right, 
Join us tomorrow morning for another great show, same time, same place. Once again, I'm your Monday host, Katherine Farrell, and this is Good Morning Hebrew Home. Have a great day, guys.